Hello, and welcome back to Murders on the Yangtze River. Last episode, we flash back to the time when Mr. Shen, us, um, first encountered Arthur on board of this mysterious ship where there's been another murder. <laughs> of course there has. Um, and we just, I think we just um, put the body in a place that's a little bit cooler. So it doesn't decompose as fast. And now we're off to investigate some more. It's a pretty view. The fog at night covers a wide span. Visibility is but mere meters. Our ship seems to be sailing with an endless darkness. Hell, you hear that? What is that sound? Do you mean the thumping and clanging up ahead, Mr. Shen? Yes. I know, it's the sound of gongs and drums. Why would they be sounding gongs and drums in the middle of the night? It means our ship has reached the Long King Temple. Today is Long Head Raising Day, February 2nd. They'll hold festive events to worship the Long King. Okay. This door leads to the crew cabin. There is no need to go down there for now. We just came out. Okay. A cockpit. Nothing like this has ever happened on my ship before. Have you checked everywhere? Are there any traces of pirates boarding the ship? There are no signs of pirates boarding the ship and no one has lost their belongings. Mr. Joseph and Mr. Shen both believe that this is a murder case. Just in time, Mr. Shen is here. In order to ascertain Madame Yin's murder as soon as possible, I must investigate the cockpit. Shipmaster Lo, please forgive me for any offense. Liang Chen has filled me in with all the details. Feel free to investigate. If there's anything you need my help with, just let me know. Okay, the engine telegraph. The style of this device is extremely unique. Mr. Shen, this is the engine telegraph. It's used to adjust ship speed. Okay. A map is laid out on a desk on which a compass, a sextant, and a telescope are placed. A navigation log that records the course, speed, position, weather, and tidal currents. It records, arrived in Shunyang at 2050, command to accelerate, proceeded at full speed. Entered the waters of the Lung King Temple at 2130, command to decelerate, slowly advanced. A power outage occurred at 2110 and power was restored at 2220. This information may be useful. I need to record it. Okay. There is a food container by the table. The same one first mate Wu took from the dining hall. Okay. First mate Wu. Mr. Liangxi, may I ask you a few questions? Mr. Shen, what would you like to know? Has Madame Yin ever had any grudges with anyone? Yin Cho is quite obtrusive and a bloodsucker, so she's made her fair share of enemies. However, none of those people are on this ship. Of all the people on this ship, who do you think has the most motive to kill her? Wu Timon. Master Wu? They might seem friendly with one another, but they've had an ongoing strife for years. The main conflict between them has always been the family business. My second oldest brother died young, but Yin Jo had a son with him, and she's got business talent. Even as the eldest son, Timon didn't stand a chance against her. Timan has always been looking for a way to deprive Yin Cho's family of inheritance rights. How would he be able to do so? 
There are a myriad of rules in big families. For instance, if a woman engages in public or immoral behavior, she'll lose her right of inheritance. Or? <laughs> okay, so this sentence is saying if she engages in public behavior. So basically, if she's seen ever in public, she'll lose her right of inheritance. I get it. <laughs> as far as I know, Yun Cho does what she pleases in secret, but Taman never caught her. I didn't expect him to go so far. I'm a bit worried about the safety of my nephew. If Madame Yin's family loses inheritance rights, then your inheritance would increase. Me? Yin Chu and I are above bickering with those two. Hmm. But why did you come to serve as the first mate of the Shanhe, Mr. Lianxin? Although the Wu's are well known for being tea merchants, I'm more of a coffee person. Mr. Liangxin, I wonder where your aspirations lie. I'm sure, Mr. Shen, you have definitely read Around the World in 80 Days before. I want to be like fog and travel the world, see the sights, eat delicious food, and enjoy life. Okay. You need money for that. Shipmaster Lo, there are a few questions I would like to ask you. Don't hesitate to ask, Mr. Shen. I heard that shipmate Hao Chu has gone missing. That's right, I haven't seen him since Yin Chu's incident. You think he did it? Although Hao Chu causes trouble when he's drunk, he's a coward. I doubt he'd kill anyone. Don't be so sure. This guy's a drunkard and a leech. leecher? Lesher? He offended Yin Cho not too long ago. Really? What happened? At the time, Yin Cho had just boarded the ship and asked Hao Chu to help carry her things. Not only didn't he lend a helping hand, he ogled her the entire time, then got told off. He refused to repent and kept insisting Yin Cho looked like the wife he never got to marry. That's not really a great excuse. Did they ever have any direct conflicts? Not really. I shooed him away. But the simper he had on his face back then, now that I think about it, was really suspicious. Don't hesitate. Oh, right. How long have you been on the Shanhe, Shipmaster Lo? I've been related to the ship for most of my life. This ship used to be called the Anqing, the first steamship us Chinese designed and built. It's even older than the famous Huanghu, but not many people know that. When this ship was built, I was only 15 and worked at the Anqing Ordnance Institute. I watched as Xu Shou and his son Xu Qianjin built the ship piece by piece. All of the pistons and screws in the ship were handmade by Xu Shou. Xu Qianjin and I hammered the boiler in the engine room together bit by bit. <laughs> Later on, coincidentally, the ship was renamed the Shanhe and I became the shipmaster. The Shanhe is more important to me than anything, so please, Mr. Shen, find out the truth. Don't hesitate to all. Alright. Every time. Shipmaster Lu, I saw there was a cabinet in Madame Yin's cabin filled with Afu's things. Afu used to stay at the cabin in the middle. Who would have known Madame Yin found her cabin too small and insisted on a bigger one? He's a kind-hearted kid, so he voluntarily gave up the cabin to them. You seem to know quite a lot about Afu. You can say that. I watched Afu grow up. He used to come and play when he was shorter than the brother. Now he calls this place home. A lot of small installations in the Shanhe were made by him. So you mean that although Afu is staying in the guest room, he is actually a crew member? How could young Master Afu be a crew member? He has a deep connection with the ship. Forgive me, but I can't go into details. Shipmaster, it's the first time I've heard you talk about this as well. If it weren't for Mr. Shen, I almost tied Afu up as the murderer. There is absolutely no way Afu could ever kill anyone.
All right, then. Oh, speaking tube. Which rooms are connected by the speaking tubes? The two adjacent to the rudder are connected to the dining hall and the engine room. There are three more next to the cabin doors that connect the three cabins. Okay. I have a basic understanding of the situation in the cockpit. Sorry for my intrusion. Don't be so cautious, Mr. Shen. You're doing me a favor. Nope. Um, whoops. Did the ship just strike a reef? Nonsense. Where would you find a reef on a river? Just now, did something fall down? Shipmaster, Mr. Shen, did you see that? I think it looked like a person. Let's go take a look. Yang Shin, you take the helm. I'll go with Mr. Shen. I have discovered the body of a crew member. He has been dead for quite some time. Mr. Shen, that, that's that's old how. How could this happen? John, come over and examine the body first. Okay. Oh. Mr. Shen, there seems to be a piece of paper inside this pile of broken glass. This is another Majong card. Hmm. The card is partially soaked by alcohol, but the text can still be vaguely identified. Nine of characters. Hmm. There are signs of swelling, congestion, and cyanosis on the deceased's face. The deceased's mouth reeks of alcohol, proving he drank a large amount before death. There is a large amount of vomit left in the deceased's mouth. He may have choked to death. The deceased's left hand fingers are stiff, with liver mortis on the arm. The deceased is holding half a broken bottle of liquor in his right hand. Muscles in the lower jaw, neck and upper limbs all show signs of rigor mortis. Muscles in the fingers, toes and lower limbs are more relaxed. Rigor mortis has yet to spread. Rigor mortis limited to the upper limbs indicates a time of death of around four to six hours ago. Large areas of liver mortis have emerged on the legs, appearing purplish red in color. The liver mortis already formed are diffused with tachyae, <laughs> prominent areas. The patches of liver mortis are starting to blend, which means he died more than three hours ago. an abrasion on the forehead and a noticeable lump on the cranial region. The wound caused by the fall is consistent with the position the deceased landed. However, it is quite strange that the lump is white instead of the usual reddish brown. John, bruises caused by falling after death are pale in colour. According to the stiffness and lividity of his body, Hao Chu was killed four to six hours ago. Cause of death, mechanical asphyxiation. Are you saying that he was strangled to death, Mr. Joseph? No, there are many circumstances of mechanical asphyxia. Strangulation is only one of them. From the appearance of his corpse, it is more likely that his death was caused by choking. How Shu is an alcoholic. It makes sense to me that he choked on his vomit after drinking. 
could this have been an accident? Not necessarily. Without knowing what was in the wine, we cannot rule out the possibility someone's, someone was involved. Furthermore, we also found this Mahjong card next to Hao Chu. It's hard not to associate his death with the death of Madame Yin. Yeah, it's too coincidental for Master Wu's Mahjong cards to appear at the murder scene. Could it be that there really was something between Old Hao and Madame Yin? Hell, don't make wild guesses about our passengers' affairs. I, uh, I, I didn't mean to. Matters are trickier than I had imagined. Perhaps this is all just the beginning. John, we need to complete investigations of the whole ship as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, does this ladder lead to the top of the cockpit? That's right, Mr. Shen. How Chu's body fell from the roof of the ship. We should go up and take a look. The yellow and white sticky marks on the ground should be How Chu's vomit. It is indeed from quite a while ago, as it has already begun to dry. What How really drank to his heart's content, huh? There are five empty wine jars scattered across the floor, and two distinctive bottles. It appears to be imported liquor. Mr. Shen, that's cola water. A type of soda. It tastes really good. Especially in the summer, after cooling it down in water, you just... <laughs> yep, he's drinking it all. Ah. You'll be happy as the day is long. Mr. Shen, do you want a taste of happiness too? That sounds like a cult. <laughs> no, but thank you for the offer. Do you want a taste of happiness too? Hmm? Just sign this contract. This is my cabin. Shall I enter for investigations? Sure. There's a teddy bear. How could something so cute appear in Mr. Joseph's bed? This teddy bear belongs to Joseph's daughter. She asked Joseph to keep it by his side. This is our bed. Sleep on the upper bunk. Ah, oh, sleep, yes. While Joseph takes the lower bunk. There is nothing out of place with the bedding on the bed or the suitcase under the bed. Mr. Shen, what's inside this jar? It contains my brother's ashes. I made this trip so I could bring him back home. My condolences, Mr. Shen. It's fine. Those who have passed are resting in peace. Let us go take a look elsewhere. Ooh, coins. Mr. Shen, you've dropped your money. This does not belong to me, however, it looks quite familiar. I may have seen it before. Guangxu currency. Hmm. There are two books titled The Great King Code and The Spirit of Laws on the side table. These are books that I have been reading recently. What's wrong, Mr. Shen? The red wine Joseph left on the table is missing. Missing? How could it be missing? I am afraid someone has visited this room in secret. This room has been thoroughly investigated. No other abnormalities were discovered. Mr. Shen, the bottle of red wine is the only thing missing, right? Nothing else? No, nothing else. That's strange. Who would steal Mr. Joseph's wine? Hmm. 
one back to suppress the demons. One back to remove ill fortune. And there goes all the evidence. <laughs> don't blame me, don't blame me. Here's an ample portion of pork along with some pig ear and snout to pay our respects. If you choose to accept it, please clear away the bad omens in this water. Master Wu, are you praying for blessings? Blood. There's blood in the water. This is retribution for being ignorant, disrespectful to the Loon King. It's a warning. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and bring more offerings before terrible things happen. Can we offer him? B but where am I supposed to find offerings? Do not panic, El. A finless porpoise has collided with the bow of the ship. It must have been the cause of the collision that made Hao Chu's body fall from the roof. I see now. Poor porpoise. Oh, uh, let us continue. Afu and Miss Yinchu are resting inside this cabin right now. Yinchu, Afu, Mr. Shen needs to come in and investigate. Uh, hello, Mr. Shen. Hello, El. Afu, you're looking much better now. Huh? You still can't speak? Oh no, what if you'll never be able to speak again? There is a hand-drawn blueprint of what seems like a fish tank on the desk. That's the thing he was wearing on his hand. There's also a strangely shaped ruler and several issues of the Chinese scientific magazine. There is a row of test tubes, two bottles of reagents and some apparatuses against the wall. Mr. Shen, what's this device with the crooked neck? That is a microscope. It is able to make an enlarged image of a small object. That's absolutely magical. No, it's scientific, L. That is what Afu would have said. Are you trying to tell us this device is very delicate and needs to be treated with care? I understand. We will be careful. Touch. Uh, ooh. They look very tasty. On the lower bunk is a plate of pastries, similar in color and shape to peach blossoms. This is Victory Cake, a snack from southern China. This game makes me hungry, like the sesame cake in, in the factory case, and now this. <laughs> I've just eaten. There are paper charms on all four corners of the top bunk, and the portrait hanging at the end. Mr. Shen, the loon in this painting looks so scary. Could it be the Loon King? Could it be the Loon King has been on the ship all this time, hiding this painting? No fear, El. It's a replica of the Nine Looms from the Song Dynasty, not the Loon King. Mr. Shen, there's a piece of balled up paper under the bed. Mr. Wu, the 5,000 tails of silver you borrowed are more than two months overdue. If you still can't pay it back before the end of the month, I can only come and claim it. Okay. Miss Yinchu, are you feeling better now? Well, sure, I guess. I still can't believe that Yinchu was... she was... Miss Yinchu, don't think back on it or you'll feel bad again. Yeah. There are still a few questions I need to ask you, Miss Yinchu. To your knowledge, Miss Yinchu, has Madame Yin ever had any grudges with anyone? I've been studying abroad, so I have no idea. 
how is her relationship with you free? Timon and Yin Cho have more frequent contact. Liang Xin, like me, doesn't come home often. I've only heard Liang Xin say that Yin Cho and Timon have some grudges. Grudges? What kind of grudges? It's nothing. I'm not involved in money-related issues. There are still a few questions I need to ask you. All right. Earlier, why did you suddenly leave the dining hall? I didn't like the mood at the mahjong table. I couldn't catch my breath. I was afraid my asthma would relapse, so I went back to my room to take, take medicine. At the time, was Madame Yin still inside the room? Y yes, she was. And did you see anyone suspicious, didn't you? No. My chest felt stuffy, so after I took my medicine, I went to the bow of the ship for some air. There are still... Oh, right. No, there aren't. Afro looks like he has something to say. You mean you saw someone suspicious? Huh? You said he's not human? Well, allow me to take a look. Alright. Please also soak this tweezer in hot water, then dry it with a clean cloth. Ahu, please open your mouth wide. Mm -hmm. There is a slight dislocation of the hyoid bone. Mr. Shen, here. Ahu, maintain your current posture. Then slowly stick out your tongue. Hold still. Out, 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 out! I... I can speak now. Detective, how did you do that? That's amazing. You rescued me two times. How can I ever thank you? You are welcome. Earlier inside the cabin, I was so dizzy. I couldn't speak at all. Thank goodness you spoke up for me. Otherwise... L, what's making you laugh? <laughs> it's nothing. Huh? How come I'm speaking with a lisp? You were unable to speak because you dislocated your hyoid bone from excessive fright. Although the hyoid bone has been repositioned, the muscles have not yet fully recovered. What? Well, what do we do? There is no need to worry too much. I had a similar experience when I was a child. Just rest. Okay, sex. Detective, do you need me to join in the investigations? I'll tell you everything I know. Take your time. You should rest well first. The same goes for you, Miss Yinchu. Without further instructions, do not leave the cabin. Okay. He's still there. Hmm? There is a paper charm attached to the stern of the ship. When, when the Loon King appears at midnight, may the golden light protect me. Mr. Shen, what is that? The second line seems to be taken from the Taoist golden light mantra. No doubt it's the handwriting of Master Wu. That is highly likely. However, I have never heard of the saying, the Loon King appears at midnight. Master Wu is a Buddhist, a Taoist, and a worshipper of the Loon King. Isn't he tired? <laughs> well, I have investigated all that I could. We should go see if Joseph is in need of our assistance. No problem. Investigations are more important. There is no need to go to the dining hall. Okay. Mr. Shen, are you looking at the paddle wheels? Hmm. 
They differ from the paddle wheels I often see while studying abroad. I heard the shipmaster say that the Shanhei was designed and handmade by the two Lord Su. John, perfect timing. Help me carry Hao Chu's body into the crew cabin as well. Alright. Wait a second. Something here seems peculiar. D don't scare me, Mr. Shen. There is a change on the body. Someone tampered with it. Ha 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 ha! How could Madame Yin's hair grow longer? D -d -d There's no way that Madame Yin is still alive, right? Unless, uh, unless everything Master Wu said is true. The supernatural are not involved. But what exactly is going on? Uh, her hairpin? Someone has stolen Madame Yin's hairpin. That's why her hair came loose, and looks like it grew longer. Did somebody steal her hairpin? You know what's what, huh? Yin Chu's hairpin can't be bought with money. The silversmith who made it used to work in a palace. That craftsmanship is long lost now. However, that hairpin was exquisitely crafted. It could also have been an act of greed. M Mr. Shen, do you think the murderer stole it? That is a possibility. If the murderer stole it, there may be an important clue hidden on the hairpin. Hmm. L, turn on the lights. We need to thoroughly investigate the crew cabin. The person who stole the hairpin might have left traces within the room. Hmm. There is a notebook with a pen at the foot of the bed. The Travels of Liang is written on the title page with an illustration of a ship with wings. The notebook is filled with dense and scribbled handwriting. In 1957, Liang boarded a flapping winged airship named the Thunderous Dawn. In search of clues to, to evolve into the perfect man, he began his journey across the world. I didn't know Liang Xin was writing a novel. Huh? Mr. Shen, there are two pieces of paper inside. The first piece of paper reads Global Travel Plan and marks the route on a scribbled map. The second piece of paper roughly calculated the expenses of traveling across the globe. Mr. Shen, what does global travel mean? Why does it cost so much? Just borrow and read Mr. Liang Xin's book Around the World in 80 Days and you will know. Hmm. Hell, does this door lead to the storage? It's the engine room. Uncle Ling says the machines are dangerous, so it's locked during work. Hmm. The lower bunk is tidier than the upper bunk. It belongs to First Mate Wu. There is a map of the world drawn over with circles and dots hanging on a wall. Around the map are some posters and postcards depicting scenic spots from various regions. A few books including Around the World in 80 Days and The Travels of Marco Polo. There are two empty wine jars and garbage on the bed. The pillow and bedding are also a mess. Without a doubt, this bunk belongs to Hao Chu. That is indeed how old Hao's bunk. Well, do you know the reason for his alcoholism? Old how liked to repeat this one nursery rhyme. The bride smiled brightly on her wedding day. The loon king came and swept her away. Cruel fate. This may have been something he personally experienced. No wonder old how always said this nursery rhyme was set up for him. Madame Yin's hairpin has been stolen. With her hair loose, the body seems a bit terrifying. 
But other than that, nothing else is out of place. There are several scattered pages behind the latter. ladder. They appear to be wrinkled. Drinking at night below deck, I stayed. Waking at dawn, my work is delayed. If that's the state that has come to pass, why not just go pour another glass? An empty stomach saved last night's wine leaves me sad, so I cry and I whine. I'll spend all of my money on booze. Tomorrow morning, I'll still hit snooze. Is this poem written by Hao Chu? Yeah, old Hao likes to write stuff like that when he's bored. There is no mess on the bunk at all. The bed is made perfectly neat and in order. Mr. Shen, this used to be Shipmaster Lou's bunk. He gave it to me after I came aboard. Then how does the shipmaster usually rest? He stays in the wheelhouse. Okay. And the bedding on the lower bunk is wrinkled but tidy. There are newspaper clippings on the wall. This is Uncle Ling's bunk. He enjoys reading the newspaper during his free time. A magic troop faces crippling financial crisis. Shanghai trip becomes swan song trip. Good reputation out the door. Commercial sea legends no more. Another strange case on the waters of the Loon King Temple. Escort ship gone missing. Let me record this. Joseph might be interested in the contents of the newspaper clippings. Hmm. There is nothing unusual about Hao Chu's body. We had just moved him down here. There is something under the pillow. It is a roughly made light yellow coat skirt embroidered with several ducks. So this is what Uncle Ling has been secretly sewing for days. He wouldn't let us look at it. Oh, Ling seemed like a rugged man. I did not expect him to know embroidery. Who could this meticulously sewn woman's coat skirt be made for? I remembered Uncle Ling had a daughter, but she passed away a few years ago. I heard the shipmaster say her death anniversary was soon. Maybe it was an offering for her. Oh, do these sodas belong to you? Actually, Liang Xin brought them on board. <laughs> but I just absolutely love drinking cola water, so I made a deal with him. Every time I help Liang Xin wash the vegetables or do the dishes, he gives me a bottle. Alright. Mr. Shen, did you discover any clues related to the person who stole the hairpin? As of now, there are no signs of any outsiders entering the crew cabin. All we have found are primarily traces of the crew's lives. And then could it be that... This ringing? I heard it early in the dining hall as well. It's the sound of the engine telegraph. The shipmaster wants to adjust the ship's speed. It'll stop ringing once Uncle Ling handles it. Well, dead people can't handle things. Why has there yet to be any response? Old Ling, are you inside? Please open the door. Angle Ling, open the door. It's me, El. Something's not right. Let's break the door down and check it out. Shen is so weak. Ah! Mr. Shen, please, please save Uncle Ling. He's lost so much blood. I am sorry, but he has breathed his last. How could this be? <laughs> Uncle Ling. The third Majong card has appeared near Old Ling's body. Seven of characters. 
This is already the third homicide that has occurred on the ship. Who could it be? Why are they committing serial murder? How Chu was the first to die. A nine of characters Majon card appeared next to her. Next was Madame Yin. She had the card eight of characters. The third was Old Ling. This card was seven of characters. Majon cards seem to be counting down. This clanging sound is really noisy, making it impossible to think. L, do you know how to turn off that noise? Yes, I do. I need to adjust the engine telegraph next to the steam cylinder. This should be the engine telegraph. This device seems quite complicated. Mr. Shen, the yellow indicator is pointing towards the speed the shipmaster wants. The pointer indicates dead slow ahead. Adjust the handle of the engine telegraph to the same position and then pull the top lever. Once that's done, the speed of the ship will be adjusted and the bell will stop ringing. Piece and clanging has finally stopped. Now I need to carefully investigate the scene. Mr. Shen, how come you're the one adjusting the telegraph? Where's old Ling? The shipmaster, Uncle Ling, he's, he's dead. No one responded to the engine telegraph, so Mr. Joseph suggested me to come take a look. Alas. John, how is the situation on site? I have also just arrived at the scene. Then let's investigate together, shall we? We shall, but we shall do so next episode. Now, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. We'll see if we have six more murders to follow in the next episodes. Presumably not. I don't think there's six characters left on the ship that could die. That we don't, like, know still live in the future. Like, I think there's... There's the shipmaster, there's the first mate, there's technically there's Joseph and L. And, um... Yinshu. So there's five characters still that we haven't seen. Wait, did I count the shipmaster? We've seen him alive in the future. So there's four characters we haven't seen alive in the future still remaining. So we will we will catch him before his endgame. Oh, and Wu. So there are five, yeah. But one of them has to be the murderer. <laughs> Unless it's us. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I will see you guys again next episode. Till then, bye bye.